stop focusing on that. The more you focus on it, the more you will sweat. Very true. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, um, Barbados. Um, we promised you that we were, we were going to come live. We had a little technical difficulty there at the beginning, and so we are um, six minutes um, late, but we are, we are here. And uh, let me just um, uh, remind you um, of why we're here, but um, even before that, if you're viewing this at this time, I'm going to ask you to kindly share, um, because this is an important um, broadcast today. Um, very educational, um, and it's important that we share. I am Marcia Weeks, and I'm a filmmaker, um, a Jamaican living in Barbados. This broadcast this morning is to educate us on Horatia Nelson and to support the petition for the removal of his statue from Hero Square here in Barbados. We want to commend and acknowledge Alex Downs, uh, who is a former journalist and history undergraduate student who in solidarity with black, with, with black people everywhere and especially in the US started the online petition to remove the Nelson statue from Hero Square here in Barbados. Today we have with us historian, uh, Mr. Trevor Marshall, who has been leading the charge on this issue for many years and have sought to educate the masses on the importance of the removal of the Nelson statue here in Barbados. In this forum, Ms. Mar Mr. Marshall will present for 30 minutes and afterwards, um, we are asking you to please feel free to um, type your questions, which will be answered by our historian today, Mr. Trevor Marshall. I'm gonna ask my husband, Dave Weeks, um, the reason for me being in Barbados, <laughs> uh, who's also a film producer um, from Barbados, and he's going to formally introduce our historian and esteemed guest, Mr. Trevor G. Marshall. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Barbados. Good morning to, to you, wherever you are listening to us in the Caribbean and across the world. Um, <laughs> people of African descent are coming together. And this morning, we bring to you um, Mr. Trevor Marshall, who is a university trained historian having studied at the University of the West Indies, both at the Mona and the Cape Hill campuses and at the University of Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. He spent 35 years as a lecturer at the Barbados Community College and retired as head of the history department in 2014. He also lectured in history at the University of the West Indies, Cape Hill as a graduate assistant. Mr. Marshall holds a degree in law and he has published extensively on Caribbean cultural history, particularly on peasantry, and has authored the book Barbados Folk Songs. Mr. Marshall has also served as Chief Examiner for the Caribbean Ex Examinations Council, or CXC, which is our regional examining body. Today, on June 13th, at approximately 9.09 a.m., I present to you our own historian, our, our man we revere, we respect, and we love, Mr. Trevor Marshall. Over to you, Mr. Marshall. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Dave. Thank you, Marcia. Good morning, all wherever you are. Let me say that I am not only a Barbadian historian, but I am Barbadian born. Now, this is necessary for me to stay in turn because what I'm going to tell you uh, might seem to be, to ardent Barbadian, to be unpatriotic. But I want to just amplify what Dave said. I'm not just, I've not just led the charge for many years. It is now 22 years exactly that I have been writing in all of our media, not just writing, but talking on television, radio, talking to groups about the incongruity of the Nelson statue in Barbados. And let me tell you that we must first acknowledge that Horatio Lord Nelson is a genuine hero. He was Britain's most famous seaman. He rose to the rank of Rear Admiral of the fleet. He born, was born in 1758, died in 1805 at for age 47. He died in the hour of battle in his most famous battle, Trafalgar, um, on the 21st of October, 1805. Now, there are certain things to note about Nelson and Barbados. 
I'm going to give, tell you what the truth, what, where the truth lies, and then I'm going to look at the fabrication, misrepresentation, uh, disillusion, um, delusion, and downright lies. As I said, I'm a patriotic Barbadian. Nelson uh, rose to become a famous uh, sailor for Britain, a seaman, uh, um, uh, and he had a, a terrible rivalry with Admiral Pierre Villeneuve, a uh, Napoleonic, uh, Napoleon's uh, admiral. He fought Villeneuve in the climactic battle of Trafalgar. Now let us establish where Trafalgar is. It is off the southern coast of Spain. It is 50 miles from Cadiz and it is 50 miles from Gibraltar. It is 4,000 miles away from Barbados. It is 800 miles away from the mother country, England. Now, Barbadians would have you believe that Horatio Nelson sailed from England 800 miles to Trafalgar, 4,000 miles away from Barbados to fight a battle on behalf of, on behalf of Barbados. This is an article of faith in a movement which has become a cult in Barbados. The battle was fought on the 21st of uh, October, 1805, Nelson died. He was honored by the British with a state funeral. And we want to tell you that he, he, there are statues to him in Montreal, in Birmingham, in England, in Burnham Thorpe, Norfolk, his homeland. There was one in Dublin, Ireland. The Irish Republican Army blew it up. And they sang, Nelson's blown up in good old Dublin. Nelson's blown up in good old Dublin. Nelson's blown up in good old Dublin. And the Irish go marching on. I want, I instance that to tell you that the Nelson statue is not sacrosanct, not even with Europeans, right? The fifth statue is the one here in Barbados. It is the only statue erected to Lord Nelson in the entire English speaking Caribbean. The only one in the entire Western hemisphere, uh, south of Canada. And it was erected by Barbadians, white Barbadians on the grounds that Nelson had fought the Battle of Trafalgar to save Barbados from French colonialism. Now, these are most important point, points to make. Now, there are three points of fact about Nelson's connection with Barbados. One, as a, cat, as a midshipman, he, in, at 18 years old, he came to Barbados in 1777. He stayed one week. He did nothing. In, 18, in 1787, at age 28, as captain of the ship Boreas, he came to Barbados. He spent two weeks. He was in conflict with the Barbadian merchants. He wrote about Barbados and called it this desolate place. He could not wait to get away from it. On the third occasion, he came to Barbados. He anchored in Carlisle Bay. He did not come ashore. He snubbed the Barbadian people and the governor. That is one fact, set of facts about Nelson. A second set, and the second point about Nelson is that, as we said, he fought the Battle of Trafalgar, where he died. The third point about Nelson and Barbados is that a statue was erected to him on the 22nd of March, 1813. Those are the only bankable, irrefutable, unimpeachable facts about Lord Nelson and Barbados. Everything else is delusion, bizarre, preposterous, ludicrous, misconception, and downright lies. In fact, the Nelson, uh, the Nelson uh, story in Barbados is a path, Barbados have developed a pathological disorder as a result of which an entire island has been trained by all the authority figures, including priests and teachers, and by institutions to regard him as our first national hero, a man who committed and dedicated his life to saving Barbados from the French. In fact, the point of fact is that Nelson was an agent of genocide, murder, torture, rape, maltreatment, 
and starvation for the people, the black people of the English speaking Caribbean. We wish to reiterate, Nelson as a ship's captain caused a mini Holocaust in the Caribbean. Between 1784 and 1787, he ranged up and down the Caribbean from Jamaica to Barbados. He executed an ancient British act called the Navigation Act of 1650. It said that no trade between Britain and her colonies should be conducted except in, I love to quote this, British bottoms, British vessels. The United States of America had fought a colonial war against Britain, 1775 to 1783. They won. They now became a foreign country, an enemy country. Yet their ships continued to trade with the Caribbean territories of Great Britain, Jamaica, Antigua, etc. These ships brought the following wheat, wheat and flour, corn, potatoes, uh, fish, including salt fish, which is a national fish of the Caribbean. Right. All of these items were, were definitely necessary, absolutely necessary for the enslaved population from British Honduras right through to the British Guyana. Nelson would board the, the American ships. He would board the American ships and he would take all the bales and boxes of food and dump them on, in the ocean. Nelson caused starvation among the entire enslaved population of the British Caribbean. I am now trying to find out exactly how many people died, how many black people died of famine and starvation as a result of Nelson's many Holocaust in, uh, in this region. It, look, it could be anywhere from 25,000 to 50,000. The British government summoned Lord uh, Horatio Nelson home in 1788 and fired him. He did not hold a captaincy of a ship for the next five years. When the war against France broke out in 1793, he was recalled to the colors and he advanced rapidly so that by 1800, he was Lord Nelson, Baron Nelson, etc. The British government sent a man called William Bly on a ship called the Bounty to Tahiti in the South Seas to rectify the situation of famine and starvation among its slaves. Bly brought the famous fruit called the breadfruit to the Caribbean in 1793. The first breadfruit tree was planted in St. Vincent, a hundred miles from Barbados. The second, uh, well, the Barbados one was planted in 1797. Since that time, 223 years, the breadfruit has been a staple for black people in the Caribbean, for the slaves and the enslaved people and their descendants. Nelson calls a mini Holocaust in the Caribbean. He starved black people to death. He is not recorded as a hero in any other Caribbean island but Barbados. Now, why is he recorded, regarded as a hero in Barbados? In June 1805, on pursuit, in pursuit of Villeneuve, Nelson passed and anchored in Carlisle Bay with 10 ships, with 22 ships and 10,000 men. A huge fleet. The Barbadians had never seen such a huge fleet before. They misconceptualized the purpose of Nelson's visit. He asked if anyone had seen a French fleet. The answer was, of course, no. The French had been anchored in Martinique, which is to the north of Barbados. They were going through the Caribbean, bombarding English colonies. Let us note carefully, the French went north from Martinique. They bombarded Dominica. They bombarded Antigua, St. Kitts and Nevis. Although they were 150 miles from Barbados, they never came south to attack Barbados. Barbados was in no danger from the French. Nelson went on to Trinidad to ask the same questions, and he also went to Grenada. Having found no evidence of the French around, he returned to England. He stayed in England for two months, then he was summoned by the Admiralty, the War Office, to go to Toulon on the Mediterranean side of France to flush out Villeneuve and to destroy his fleet. Villeneuve 
was coming through um, the, the Bay of Biscay when he heard that Nelson was pursuing him. He and his fleet turned to flee back to Toulon. Nelson ambushed the French fleet of 33 ships. Note carefully, Nelson had 26 ships. The French had 33. Nelson executed a classic ambush by which he uh, prevented 17 of the French ships from um, participating in the action. And he and his 26 ships ambushed the, the French fleet. Out of the 33 ships, the French lost 26. The English lost zero. The French lost 10,000 men killed and wounded and captured. The, French, the, the British lost 459 plus Nelson, who was shot by a sniper uh, in the battle and died four hours later. Now that death, the tragic death of Nelson led to hero worship in England. In Barbados, it became the source of the basis of a cult, a cult, a cult. The cult of Nelsonism started in 1805 when the news reached Barbados on the 20th of December that Nelson had been killed at Trafalgar. Instantly, the whites in Barbados were galvanized into action. They held a service on the 23rd of December at St. Michael's Cathedral, dedicating themselves to honoring Nelson for, quote, not carefully, saving Barbados from the French. Now, I must interject here to say that initially, the action at Trafalgar was thought to have saved England from the French. That is not true. We have English writers, and by the way, all my information comes from English and other writers. You can see behind me the uh, books. They said that Nelson's victory at Trafalgar did not save England. It did not save England. The Napoleonic War continued, and the Napoleonic War ended in uh, Waterloo in Belgium in 1815, June this year. Is an uh, uh, is uh, the fifteenth of June is an anniversary. At that battle, Wellington defeated Napoleon, and the French threat evaporated. Nelson's victory at Trafalgar was a blip on the screen because Napoleon defeated Austria and the other French allies of England at Austerlitz in 1805. So it was even Stevens in the war between England and France. The Battle of Trafalgar did not save big, big, big England. How therefore could it save little England Barbados? That did not matter to the Barbadian whites at that time. They met, they held a service at Epiphany on the 6th of June, 1806, and committed themselves to erecting a statue for Nelson. They took 89 months, seven years and five months before they erected that statue on the 22nd of March, 1813. They chose a site in Bridgetown, which was sacred to black people who were enslaved. The site on which the Nelson statue stands is where black people were auctioned coming off the slave ship. Over half a million Africans came to Barbados, which was the clearing house the first point from Africa. They were enslaved, they were auctioned there as we hear from Oloda Equiano. It is at that point that black pu pubescent girls were finger raped, their breasts were squeezed, and if they objected, they were whipped by the Barbadian slave masters and sent to where? Jamaica, where the slave, the enslaved person was killed in seven years. Barbados was the head and fount of the slave trade in the Caribbean. Oloda Equiano tells us that those slaves, those enslaved people who were not sold in Barbados were sent to Virginia. All of the American enslaved people before 1807 came through Barbados. Barbados is extremely important therefore as a hub of the slave trade. And the Barbadian whites deliberately put in the place where Africans were uh, auctioned, a statue to Lord Nelson. It is life size, six, uh, five feet six tall. It, the pedestal is taller than Nelson. It is about 10 feet tall. 
and they inscribe on the statue, the preserver of the West Indies in an hour of peril. Now, let me reiterate, the Battle of, of Trafalgar did not save Jamaica. It did not save Antigua, St. Kitts, Nevis, Dominica, Grenada, St. Vincent, Tobago, Trinidad. It only saved Barbados. How ludicrous can we get? But as I told you, a cult of Nelsonism developed in Barbados. Barbadians developed a parallel story about Nelson and the <clears throat> action at Trafalgar. Nobody in Barbados ever knew how the action at Trafalgar went, but here's a story which developed in Barbados. If Nelson had lost the Battle of Trafalgar, Barbados would have become a French colony. Only Barbados. The Barbadian uh, interpretation of the Battle of Trafalgar ignored the fact of Nelson's famous ambush technique. The Battle of Trafalgar has been taught in all naval academies across the Western world as a classic ambush. Only one fleet could have won the Battle of Trafalgar. That was the British. Yet the Barbadian story would have you believe that Nelson faced a superior fleet in numbers and it was a desperate struggle and through lady luck and and good and god's uh, blessing nelson won the battle but he only won the battle by a miniature margin and because look he lost his life and he lost his life fighting to save barbados from the french now as i have said as i have said when you hear this story you are motivated to either laugh in disbelief at how a bizarre hallucination could become history. Or you, you laugh in derision, or you cry in disbelief, how for 207 years, from 1813 until today, 2020, an entire nation of Barbadians, that entire nation has been fooled, gulled, misrepresented, miseducated uh, into believing that Nelson fought a battle against the French, the prize of which was Barbados. And the fact that he won the battle and he lost his life obligated Barbadians to create a statue to him and to regard that statue with all respect and gratitude to any Jews or Israelis listening. The creation of that statue would be like someone creating a statue of Adolf Hitler or Adolf Eichmann and placing that statue in Tel Aviv or in Jerusalem and telling Jews, this man saved you from Bolshevism. That is what happened in Barbados. A mass murderer like Horatio Nelson was established as a national hero in this country, Barbados. And all Barbadians, including myself, came along believing that we had to pass that statue in the capital, Bridgetown, and salute it. My father-in-law said that he came from British Guyana, and when he came to Barbados, his mother told him he came here in 1926. Salute that man. He saved us from the French. As we said, it is the most bizarre, ludicrous, preposterous story ever told in the entire British Caribbean. There is worse to come. Nelson is on record on writing and writing to a man called Simon Taylor in Jamaica saying, I was bred in the old colonial school and taught to regard the colonies and all uh, our English colonies and their just rights shall always be protected by me as long as I have a tongue to raise my voice and an arm to strike against the damnable doctrine of Wilberforce and his hypocritical allies. Now who is Wilberforce? William Wilberforce was born the same year as Nelson in <clears throat> Hull. He, his, his father was a wealthy merchant. Wilberforce gained election to British Parliament. And from 1789 until 1807, uh, 18 years, uh, Wilberforce, excuse me, Wilberforce used his father's money to fight two causes. One, he fought for the abolition of the slave trade. And two, he fought to abolish slavery. It is worth telling 
that Nelson died in 1805 and the slave trade, the British slave trade was abolished in 1807. If Nelson had not been killed at Trafalgar, slavery and the slave trade might have gone on for another 20, 30, 40 years. All throughout the region, all throughout the Caribbean and America, we have mementos of William Wilberforce. There is a Wilberforce University in the, universe, in the United States for Blacks. There is a Wilberforce village in Jamaica. There's a village in Guyana called Buxton because Thomas Fowell Buxton was Wilberforce's deputy. In Barbados, there's a statue of Lord Nelson, Wilberforce's inveterate enemy. That is one of the points we have to take. Now, even more incredible, in Barbados, there was a governor called Sir George Beckwith, 1807 to 1813. After Nelson had died in 1805, French privateers threatened Barbados, 1806. Admiral J.B. Newton had to scare them off. Nelson was dead. He had saved Barbados. 1808, 1807, another French group threatened Barbados. Right. Captain Ballard scared them off. Nelson was dead two years. In 1808, another set of Frenchmen threatened Barbados. Admiral Cochrane went out there and scared them off. Nelson, who had saved Barbados, was dead three years. The British told Captain George, uh, sorry, General George Beckwith, this is becoming a major problem. We are giving you 10,000 men and a fleet of 20 ships. We want you to attack Martinique, Guadeloupe, Marie Galant, San Bartolome, all the French islands, destroy them as bases from which the French could attack Barbados and the Windward Islands. Sir so George Beckwith did as he was commanded, and over an 18 month period, he flushed out and destroyed those nests of uh, French subversion and attack on Barbados. He came back to Barbados in 1810 as a triumphant victor. The Barbados legislature gave him five things. One, they named a street after him, Beckwith Street. Two, they erected a monument around the garrison to the soldiers who fought with Sir George Beckwith. Three, they named a fort for Beckwith. Four, right, um, four, they took a square in Bridgetown and they renamed it Beckwith Square. It is now called Beckwith Mall. And five, they gave Sir George Beckwith 25,000 pounds for saving Barbados from the French. Believe you me, Beckwith is not honored in Barbados. 90% of Barbados listening to me would not know of the existence of George Beckwith, the man who saved Barbados from the French. In 1805, 100 years after the Battle of Trafalgar, Nelson, that was a gala year in Barbados. Nelson's statue was illuminated. Here is this picture of Nelson's statue garlanded in 1905. And look at who the people are who are heralding him, black Barbadians fooled, gold, formed into a cult. Now, I want to remind you, anybody coming to Barbados, right? My, one of my favorite films is God, Godfather. And there is a scene where Michael Corleone, as the new Godfather, goes to Las Vegas and meets his brother Fredo. He irritates the big man there, Mo Green. And Fredo says, Michael, you just can't come to Las Vegas and mess with Mo Green. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot come to Barbados and mess with Lord Nelson. Black people in Barbados will berate you. They will remind you that Nelson saved Barbados from the French. They will tell you, you have to show them the ball that shot Nelson, meaning that the musket ball which shot him to death could never be found. That is an absolute lie. The ball now lies in a museum in England. They want to, they tell you that Nelson's um, body 
was taken from Trafalgar in a barrel of Barbadian rum and transported to Britain, England for burial. That is, an, that is another absolute lie. Nelson's body was transported to England in a barrel of brandy. And when the brandy evaporated, they used gin. Nelson had nothing to do with Barbados. Barbadians have lulled themselves into a sense of glory. There were scavengers for Nelson's uh, glory. From 1805 to 1905, there was modest uh, celebration. 1905 was the apotheosis. A stamp was issued in Barbados celebrating Nelson. Ladies and gentlemen, um, 1838 is the date when slavery was abolished in the British Caribbean, including Barbados. 1938 passed, and there was no recognition in Barbados of the fact and the act of abolition. There was a public holiday declared throughout the British, British Caribbean territories, the 1st of August, Emancipation Day. I am 72 years old. I came along not knowing this. I knew there was a public holiday called August Bank Holiday. Only in 2009, in 2008, sorry, a prime minister, the Right Honorable um, Owen Seymour Arthur declared that henceforth that day will be called Emancipation Day. Imagine from Belize in the north, through the Virgin Islands, the Turks and Caicos, the Leeward Islands, Jamaica, the Windwards, Trinidad and Tobago, down to Guyana. The, the 1st of August was Emancipation Day. In Barbados, it was August public holiday because it was not to interfere with the veneration to uh, Lord Nelson. No, for 150 years, from 1813 to 1962, Barbadians thronged the Carinage in Bridgetown and all the dignitaries would assemble there and the Bishop of Barbados would throw a wreath in the Carinage and prayers would be said for the soul of Lord Nelson. The father of independence, the right honorable, the deceased Errol Walton Barrow stopped this practice in 1962. He said, I don't want my children and other Barbadian to children to grow up as slaves. But Mr. Barrow did not abolish, he did not, he did not abolish the cult of Nelson. He did not remove the Nelson statue. And therein lies his signal mistake because abolishing the practice of venerating Nelson every 21st of October is one matter. Removing the Nelson statue is another matter. I bring you forward to November 1990. The Nelson statue lay in the middle of our main street, Broad Street, and it inhibited uh, traffic. The then Prime Minister, Mr. Barrow's successor, uh, Mr. Lloyd Erskine Sandiford, moved the statue eight feet to allow taxis and other traffic to, to uh, flow freely. As the Grenadian humorist Paul Kings Douglas has said, we'd say in local lingo, who tell he to do that? The entirety of the Barbadian nation heap scorn, ridicule, and vituperation on Mr. Sandiford's head. He was called King Gong, black idiot, a monkey. He was, it was said that he moved Nelson's statue and turned it to fit to back our main commercial street, Broad Street, and as a result, the entire commerce and economy of Barbados went down. Three years later, Mr. Sandiford was defeated in an election. We have not yet developed the point whether removal of removal of the Nelson sta movement of the Nelson statue statue caused or was a party part of the cause of his defeat. But we know that if you touch the Nelson statue in Barbados, you are touching the Lord's anointed because Barbadians were uh, fooled to and trained to worship two blonde, blue-eyed Europeans. First, Jesus Christ, who, who saved us from our, sin our sins. And secondly, and only below Jesus, Horatio Lord Nelson, who saved us from the French. 
That is the story to date, except for this writer. In 2007, the same Mr. Right Honorable Mr. Owen Arthur held a commission, organized a commission on the Nelson statue. It recommended the removal of the statue. 13 years have passed and the statue still stands in Barbados. Thank you. Oh boy, thank you, uh, Mr. Marshall. Such um, information um, that we are, we are now getting um, from uh, Mr. Marshall this morning. Um, quite interesting. I'm seeing all the, the questions. People are just in total shock um, watching. And um, we have a couple of questions. Well, first of all, thank you so much, uh, much Mr. Marshall um, well, for, uh, for sharing with us. I want to first establish that I am a born Barbadian. I'm wearing my waistcoat and suit from 1996, uh, a cadet of 1966. But I must say that I have suffered hate mail, death threats. I have been attacked through every medium in Barbados over the last 22 years for researching the information which I've just shared with you. Yes, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, we met up with Mr. Marshall as we did the, um, the Barrow um, film. And um, he was one of the persons um, on the film that we interviewed. And it's when we heard all of this information and thought it was, would be necessary to get it out to um, the, the masses because he would have done this already on, um, we won't mention here, the, the certain stations and it has not been aired. And so I thought it would be necessary that we get this out to the masses. Um, uh, there's someone on here, Amarel, um, Rosie, um, I think she is in Atlanta and um, she wants to know if the authorities um, have this information and, and who um, it is that um, erected or, or um, you know, sanctioned the erection of this statue if, or, and if our, if our government is aware of this information, Mr. Marshall. I thank you, Amaral. I know that um, the former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Owen Seymour Arthur has this information. The members of his commission include uh, His Excellency, our, represent, our uh, Ambassador to CARICOM, Mr. David Kamishong, who was on that uh, committee. And he was the first person to allow me 10 years ago to do a lecture like this. Whether the current uh, party in power in Barbados knows of this, I do not know. What I do know is that every effort has been made to suppress this information being vote safe to the entirety of Barbados. Whenever I have spoken about or attempted to speak about the Nelson cult in Barbados, many exercises have been introduced against me. I have been prohibited from going to schools. At the community college where I lectured for 35 years, efforts were made to fire me. Um, anytime I speak about uh, this to taxi men, et cetera, people say, oh, but the statue brings, um, brings tourists to England. Marcia, I stood on the corner about 20 feet about ne from the Nelson statue, 25 feet, for 10 years straight, interviewing tourists who were in Barbados, asking the tourists from England, did you come to Barbados to view the Nelson statue? I can tell you that 87% of those tourists said no. They came to enjoy sea, sun, sun. They came to enjoy cricket. Many of them did not know who Nelson was and an equal number did not care. The Barbadians do not know who Nelson was. He is an abstract um, entity to them. Nelson is the statue. Nelson is not flesh and blood. Whenever I have tried to tell Barbadians that Nelson created a mini Holocaust in the Caribbean, that Nelson starved to death anything like 10,000 
black Barbadians people, you see a glazed look in their eyes as if to say, I don't care. This is our statue. As a matter of fact, a governor of the central bank told me that that man there is not an Englishman. That is a Barbadian. It has been there so long that he is no part of the Barbadian landscape. And people have said, you cannot do anything to Nelson because he is part of our history. Now, I, Amarel, I want to tell you, yes, as a historian, I look on with reservation at the destruction of statues. But this Nelson statue was the wrong statue for the wrong reason, in the wrong place, in the wrong island. It was based on an absolute lie, a set of lies. As I said, Nelson had nothing to do with Barbados. He did not fight for Barbados. He did not save Barbados from the French. Yet the Nelson cult in Barbados is 207 years old and you cannot eradicate that cult. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Marshall. Um, Denise Charles is asking uh, a question and she's asking if there's a relationship between the statue and the Masonic Lodge. If, is there a relationship between the statue um, at Hebrew Square, the Nelson statue and the Masonic Lodge? Mr. Marshall. Yes, I don't know. I have ghost written a uh, history of a couple of Barbados's uh, Masonic Lodges. There is no mention, there is uh, no evidence in their material about any connection to Nelson. And with good reason, Nelson was not loved in Barbados. Nelson starved out the slaves. Nelson destroyed the, the commerce of Barbados. Nelson was the nearest thing to a corona pandemic in the region. Nobody in the Caribbean liked Horatio Nelson. They accepted when he became Lord Nelson and he won the Bob Jafaga. They acknowledge his feet and you find therefore there is a plaque in Jamaica at um, Charles Fort, Port Royal, where he stayed for seven years. He married a woman from Nevis. There is a plaque there in the church. He spent rest and relaxation in Antigua. There's Nelson's dockyard. He is not known or revered in the other Caribbean territories. There is no evidence that he's connected with any Masonic Lodge. Okay. okay, thank you so much, Mr. Marshall. Um, I'm, I'm still waiting on a couple more um, questions. Um, but one a question that I would like to ask, um, are you aware of the, um, I know that there was a movement as you spoke, uh, spoke about that, um, started in the, I think the early nineties, late eighties, uh, um, you know, in terms of asking for the removal of the statue. Um, I want to know um, what, you know, why, why was it not removed? You know, is there, are there are particular groups of people that have a particular interest? Who are these people? If you're, if you're aware of, of who they are. That is an excellent, that's a great question, Marcia. As I have told you, there is a cult of Nelsonism in Barbados. In Barbados, removing the statue would be like removing effigies of Jesus Christ from the churches. I make no bones about that. I have researched this for 22 years, and I know that the most vocal, violent, vicious defenders of Nelson in Barbados look like Marcia Weeks and Trevor Marshall. <laughs> there are people, these are people who gain prestige. If they go to England, they say, oh, our statue, we have a statue of Lord Nelson, you know? And it was erected 38 years or 28 years before the one in England. Some of them even state that the Nelson statue in Barbados was the first to be erected. That is not so. It was the fifth to be erected but there is a tissue of lies, delusion, and propaganda about Nelson. Can you imagine every Barbadian school child knows as an article of faith 
John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to save the world. They also know an, uh, as an article of faith, Nelson 3.16, for Nelson so loved Barbados that he fought a battle to save Barbados from colonialism. Now to say that that is an absolute lie to people doesn't make any sense. I have, I have even used undiplomatic words. I have said that the, the, the story of Nelson saving Barbados is a musty, stinking, frozy, dingy lie. And all of those words are in the dictionary. It does not phase Barbadians. They say, oh, he's part of our history. The history, if the Nelson was part of the history, you could understand. But Nelson is not part of the Barbados history. Except, you know what Nelson did in Barbados and to Barbados? He stayed at inns when he came here on two occasions. He ate food and he drank wine. He let down about 20 pounds of excrement and about 11 gallons of urine in the Barbados earth. That is all Nelson did for and to and in Barbados. And yet the Barbadian tells you he is part of our history. Now there have been 240,000 English sailors who have visited Barbados since 1627, right? 383 years, 393 years. 240,000 English sailors. All of them have done as Nelson did. They have drunk here, eaten here, defecated, urinated. There is no veneration of them. Admirals have been here. Sir Winston Churchill has been to Barbados. Queen Elizabeth has been to Barbados. Nobody, no black person in Barbados gets more prestige and pride from the fact that Sir Winston Churchill or Queen Elizabeth came here than those who get prestige and pride from the fact that Lord Nelson saved Barbados from the French. Mm. A total lie. Mm. And if you were to touch that Nelson statue, you would be signing your death warrant in Barbados because oh, black people in Barbados will kill you for the Nelson statue. They say what? it is part of the history. But, but I, my contention, it is not part of the history because it is a lie. It would, be, it would be like saying that Adolf Hitler saved Europe from Bolshevism or that Adolf Hitler was a protector of the Jews. As we all know, Adolf Hitler ex gave the order to kill 6 million Jews. Nelson, Nelson personally supervised the throwing of food overboard from American ships bringing foodstuffs to the enslaved people in Barbados. And yet the main defenders of Nelson and Barbados are the descendants of those slaves who Nelson starved out. It is a conundrum which can only be explained by the fact that there is a Nelson cult in Barbados. Mr. Marshall, thank you so much um, for, for um, just being here this morning and for answering our questions and um, for educate, educating us. Um, there, um, Amarel, um, I thought she was in Atlanta. She's now in Barbados. Um, lucky for you, um, Rosie. And um, she's asking, um, how can we go about um, getting the, the, the statue removed? Um, is there a process? And how long will it take? Are you, uh, um, can you answer yes. any of those questions? Great question. The Right Honorable Owen Seymour Arthur established a commission to look at what is now called Hero Square. I omitted to say <clears throat> that the area on which the Nelson statue stands, it, it was for uh, almost 200 years Trafalgar Square. It has now been renamed Hero Square. The former prime minister established a commission to, to develop the future of Hero Square. That commission reported its, its uh, recommendations, which inter alia means among other things, recommended that the Nelson statue be removed because according to them, the contribution of Nelson to Barbados was at best modest. I'm quoting from the commission's report. 
they also said that to re to keep the statue there would be to convey the, the impression to future generations that Nelson was a hero of Barbados. Therefore, the government of Barbados has rejected the notion that Nelson is a hero of Barbados, yet the statue still stands. Now, what would be the process? Now, I don't know, I did not check on this before coming, but it seems to me that the recommendations of that committee were laid in Barbados's parliament. I therefore don't know if it was accepted uh, for the work to begin to remove the statue. We can check on that. However, what it means is that the present administration, all it needs is the political will. I am not prescribing to the right honorable Mayor Amor Motley and her government. I stay out of politics. But what I'm saying is that there is a recommendation from a former prime minister who incidentally was uh, belonged to Mrs. Ms. Motley's political party to remove the statue. All it requires is for Ms. Motley and her government to activate the recommendation of the Commission of Inquiry on Heroes Square. Now, in 1990, it took, I think, 45 minutes to turn the Nelson statue around. And by the way, if you turn around, if you move that statue, the, Bar the Barbadians, the whole of protests from the Barbadians will reach that station which the Americans just sent up. There will be a God Almighty hole if you move the statue from its space. Because an innocent turning around of it in 1990 was interpreted as like visiting the seven plagues on the, on the, on the Israelites. As um, what's his name, Fredo said, you just don't come to Barbados and mess with Lord Nelson's statue. It will therefore take a gigantic act of will by this or any other Barbadian government to remove the Nelson statue from its pedestal. It is part of Barbados. It is an abstract part of the Barbadian culture. Like Jesus loves me, this I know. As a matter of fact, I came across a poem which says, Nelson loves me, this I know, for the teacher tells me so, right? He, <clears throat> um, we Barbadians to him belong. We were weak and he was strong. Yes, Nelson loves me. Yes, Nelson loves me. Yes, Nelson loves me. The teacher told me so. Now this is a cultural, this is part of the culture of Barbados. And by the way, people will ask where I get this information from. Let me advise you, let me advise you. Here's a book on Nelson. Here is another book on Nelson. Here is another book on Nelson. And Barbadian historians Henry Fraser and John Gilmore wrote on page 120 of their book, The A to Z of Barbadian Heritage, the following words, Nelson had no real connection with Barbados. This, oh, in these books on Nelson written by British authors, you do not get any mention of Barbados. Terry Coleman wrote this book on Barbados and all he says, Nelson, passed by Barbados. That is the only reference. There is nothing to connect Barbados to Nelson, except that he starved out the people of Barbados. The, Brit the Barbadian government, and I have to choose my words carefully. I don't want to come over as being uh, a person fomenting the removal of a landmark because I did a law degree. And I know that if anybody removes that Nelson statue, 
the police will come to the house of Trevor Marshall. It is as simple as that. I will have been, I, well, I might be considered as someone instigating the destruction of a national landmark. But the question is, how can the statue be removed? And let me say, only by act of the present parliament and the present prime minister. And I think that that, by making that statement, my law professors at Cave Hill would be proud of me. I have not made a statement with criminal intent and content. Mr. Marshall, um, is the statement you made that Mr. Lawrence Nelson was an opposer of the abolition of slavery and the, the work of William Wilberforce to me is ample evidence that he obviously was not a friend of ours. If he opposed Wilberforce and he opposed the abolition of slavery, as you said, as you already said, if he had lived further, then slavery and the whole slave trade could have continued for many more years. Isn't this therefore a significant basis, a, a, a solid reason for us as Barbadians to continue this petition and to inquire into the removal of the, of the statue? And two, is it true that Lord Nelson spent more time in Jamaica than he did in Barbados? Yes. No. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Dave, for your questions. Let me remind you. Yes, you asked if the fact that Nelson supported slavery is sufficient grounds for removal of the statue. Before I answer, I want to remind you of something. I did a survey of the people how Barbadians love Lord Nelson. There are about 500 people in Barbados with the names Horatio or Nelson. There is actually a disc jockey on a radio station whose name is Anthony Nelson, and he is called Admiral Nelson. By contrast, by contrast, I have come across only five persons in Barbados with the name Wilberforce. The fact that Nelson supported slavery, but I know that a number of people jump on this. It is sufficient reason. For me, that is not enough. I think I look back at the fact that Captain Horatio Nelson committed a mini Holocaust in the Caribbean by dumping American foodstuffs from American ships into the ocean. He caused black people in Barbados and other Caribbean people to eat dirt. If you want to know about this first person who alerted me to this is the president of our West Indian University, the University of West Indies, Sir Hilary Beckles, who discovered that there is an, an, an epidemic of dirt eating and people dying from dirt eating in the 1780s. Nelson did that. To me, the most heinous thing about Nelson is that he is a mass murderer. You can say that he supported slavery. The point is that the British government had to send William Bly in the ship called the Bounty. And there is a famous film called Mutiny on the Bounty to bring breadfruit. Whenever you look at the breadfruit tree and the breadfruit, um, the farine, remember that Nelson starved out the people and therefore caused this fruit, which can be prepared in 12 different ways to be brought to the Caribbean. To the, the most heinous thing for me that Nelson did was to starve out the black people of the Caribbean. If you argue that he supported slavery, the answering, the opposing, the repulse, the retort will be, oh, other people supported slavery. So be careful with that one. I think that the most heinous thing that Nelson did is create a mini Holocaust. Nelson is the Adolf Hitler of the Caribbean. Now, you ask about Nelson's visits to Jamaica. Nelson actually spent seven years in Jamaica as part of the British um, naval squadron there. 
he integrated, he was integrated in the Jamaican society. My research shows that he stood godfather for um, a man who became the great uncle of the famous Jamaican nurse, Mary Seacole. He was anchored at Port Royal. That is why there is an eight by eight inch plaque in his memory at Port Royal. Nelson married a woman from Nevis. He spent time in Nevis about three months. There is no statue to him in Nevis. The Nevisians do not claim that he saved them from the French. His wife came from Nevis. Nelson spent time probably two months in Antigua. He is honored with Nelson's dockyard at English Harbor. The Antiguans have never claimed that he saved them from the French. As a matter of fact, the Antiguans sued him for over 40,000 pounds for destroying their trade with America and starving out their slaves. Therefore, I repeat, the most egregious action, the most heinous, the most wicked and brutal thing that Horatio Nelson did in the Caribbean was to starve black people by throwing foodstuffs from the American ships overboard. Yes, he supported slavery. Yes, he dedicated himself saying, I will give an arm, as long as I have an arm to strike and a voice and a tongue to launch my voice against the damnable doctrine of Wilberforce and his hypocritical allies. But be careful in establishing as a base for removal of the statue, the point that he supported slavery. He, he was worse than Jack the Ripper for Barbadian black people. He was worse than Adolf Eichmann. Adolf Eichmann made sure that the trains flowed from all over Europe, crammed with Jews to go to Auschwitz, Majanek, Sobibor, Treblinka, Chemno, and Belzec, six extermination camps in which the Germans and Nazis put six million Jews. And we must not forget that they put black people also because they call them subhumans on Temensch in the gas chambers. Adolf Eichmann and Lord Nelson, to my mind, occupy the same position in history. They were brutal men. And there is nothing to whitewash Nelson. There is nothing to whitewash Eichmann. So please don't anchor any objection to Nelson's statue in Barbados by saying he supported slavery. That is a very generalized statement because almost everybody in England supported slavery. You have to also deal with the fact that people say, will say that by removing the statue, you are destroying uh, history. That is nonsense. Mm. The fact that Nelson came here and let down feces and urine, that is all he did in Barbados. That is not history. That is not history. You can hear, you hear that, oh, people are destroying history. But look, when Columbus left Genoa, I left Cadiz and sailed in our direction, Columbus destroyed history because Ptolemy and the Greeks had said that the earth was flat. When Copernicus argued that the earth moves around the sun, he was creating history because the history before that was that the sun revolved around the earth. So you will hear this nonsense about destroying history. If the history created is false, if it is based on falsehoods, fabrication, and lies, destroying it is right-sizing the history. Removing the statue of Nelson would not be destroying history. It would be removing a desperate, dangerous, dirty, musty, stinking, frozy, dingy lie. Nelson is not history. Nelson <laughs> is an aberration. Imagine in Jamaica, there's a statue, statue to Sir George Rodney. You right. will not hear Jamaicans argue for the removal of the statue of Rodney 
in Spanish Town. Why? Because Rodney actually saved Jamaica from the French. That is undeniable, bankable, unimpeachable history. The statue of Nelson and Barbados has been predicated and based on the notion that Nelson saved Barbados from the French. There are no words enough to indicate how much of a falsification or fabrication that is. Therefore, it is not history. By removing the Nelson statue, you would now be right-sizing history because he is a blip on the society of Barbados. And as I said, he did nothing more to Barbados than eat, drink, defecate, and urinate. You do not erect a statue to a man on that basis. Mr. Marshall, thank you so much. Um, we have two, two more questions because um, some of us, once the march is still happening, there's a march that is happening with um, Mr. Denny and we want to be supportive as we are as we are of that march as we are supporting um, this young man um, who Alex is Downs. Alex Downs. We are in total support of him, and this program is in support of him. We're working together as one, and I we are going to close this program very soon because we want to go to support um, David Denny in that march, and we are one people. You know, I wish I could. I yes. wish I could join David, but I'm over 70 and I'm told to avoid crowds. Avoid crowds. Well, we take, we take pictures so you, Mr. Marshall. You know, I, I do tell that. David point. Denny that I am <laughs> there offering moral support, but I yes. cannot contract COVID. Otherwise, no, not at all. Not at all. Well, well um, Michelle Waterman um, from right here in Barbados, she has um, a question for you. Um, she's, she's asking, why was this, why was it turned? Um, the statue was turned, um, and then there's another. I'm going to give you the two questions at the same time because we want to um, to close off um, by 10:20. Um, it says, "What will it be expensive to move it now?" Um, so the first question that, that um, is from Richard Waterman: Why was it turned in the first place? The second question from Lila Brown is: Will it be expensive to move it now? Thank you, Michelle and Lila. I think I answered the first question, but I, it is my pleasure to repeat it, repeat my answer. For from 1813 to 1990, that is what, 170, is it what, um, 77 years, the statue of Lord Nelson faced down Broad Street. It faced Cape Shepherd, the Costa, uh, Fogarty's, Harrison's, etc., etc., down to the mutual. It was in the middle of the street. There are no two ways about it. Traffic had to swerve to avoid it. Today, if you go into the taxi stand in Bridgetown to the east of Shefet and the, the actual cave where the slaves were, were flogged, right? The Nelson, the taxis there can exit their stand and join the flow of traffic moving east from the commercial center of Bridgetown, going along Trafalgar Street to uh, Bridge Street or to Mar Hill Street. Prior to, to November 1990, they could not. The Sandiford government took the decision to move the statue eight feet, eight feet to the left. It was facing down Bridgetown, down Broad Street. So now where it is, it's eight feet to the right. It was a simple, non-political, non-emotional, non-ideological act. It was a simple act of releasing the traffic flow because by then Barbados had about 80,000 cars and growing, and it was a bottleneck. Mr. Sandiford would not gain credit. He was a Barbados scholar, but he would get a D minus for communication. He did not tell the people of Barbados why he was doing that. All that happened is that on the 18th of November, 1990, workmen turned up. And in one hour, 
they moved the Nelson statue and its pedestal to help the flow of traffic. That was interpreted as that was the only reaction worse than that or most tumult more tumult tumultuous than that in Barbados is the reaction of Barbadians to Hurricane Janet. Hurricane Janet destroyed their houses and took 35 lives. Hurricane Sandiford destroyed the cult effigy of Nelson. Touch not the Lord's anointed. That is how it was interpreted. To repeat, Sandiford was regarded as King Kong, big, big black and ugly, bush monkey, an idiot, an arrant racist. I have all of the documentation. I have all of the newspaper reports from then. For a simple act of moving a statue which had caused a bottleneck. Unfortunately, Mr. Sandiford or the workmen paid no attention to the cult status of Nelson. The statue now faced east and not west. It was said by Barbadians that the economy was prospering when the Nelson statue faced west down Broad Street. And now that it had been turned around, Nelson was giving a posterior burp to the Barbadian economy and therefore the economy went down. Can you imagine such hallucination in a country which, calls it, which regards itself as the premier country for education in the Caribbean? Barbadians have always been seen as more bright than the rest of the Caribbean and yet the occult Obia entered them their thinking that to move the Nelson statue was tantamount to moving the statue of Jesus Christ elsewhere. That is the answer to one question, right? And let me repeat, it was a simple act of the Department of Highways and, and Transport or the Ministry MTW. Ministry of Transport and Works. Ask any retired person from that era. Right, the second question. Uh, what was the second question? Uh, from cost, Leland. Cost to move this. Well, will it be oh, yes. It took, it cost 30,000 Barbados dollars at that time. That was about 10,000 English pounds or about 15,000 American dollars to effect the movement because the pedestal was huge, cement and wrought iron, etc., and you had to be very careful not to do anything. Thirty thousand Barbadians listened to propaganda, which said that it cost half a million dollars. The sums it was supposed to have cost ranged between eighty thousand dollars and five hundred thousand dollars. It cost $30,000. You can check the Auditor General's report for 1990 to verify that. That's not Trevor Marshall. And by the way, everything I have told you has come from books on Nelson and research and material that nobody in Barbados has had the gumption to research. I am the Einstein of Barbadian historians. Remember his theory on relativity? He was the only person who devised it, and he was called an idiot, a crank, and an ass. I have been called a twistorian and every other beautiful adjective for being the only historian to investigate the Nelson phenomenon and the Nelson cult. Um, will it cost, how much will it cost to move it? 30,000, 30,000 Barbados dollars. It will cost less than that because all you need to do is uh, remove the pedestal, take, well, first of all, take the statue down carefully, gingerly. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, I have not recommended anything bad or deleterious or wicked to the statue. I will never recommend destroying the statue. 
All it would take is for you to gingerly, carefully treat the statue like a newborn baby and remove it from its pedestal. Remove the pedestal from there. The entire exercise might cost, might take about two hours. And it might cost in terms of labor, I suspect, because you have hydraulic truck, you have trucks now which can, which can move it, etc. Not more than 10,000 Barbados dollars, 3.5 thousand <clears throat> British pounds, or 5,000 American dollars. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. Um, I think our time is up. And um, we were enlightened and educated. And I think that's something that's very, very important the education of our people knowledge is golden and want to know the truth then your responsibility is to act on it and therefore mr marshall we thank you very much for giving of your time and your your extensive research uh, we don't take it for granted we honor you and we respect you highly and we thank you for taking the time to educate barbadians and we, we hope and we pray that this won't be the last time that we will have more opportunities to receive this kind of education because i think knowledge is what we are lacking. We don't know. We, we live and we go around and we go to work and come back home just living. We don't have the knowledge and the facts and the truth. And I think in this time, in this area, when so many things, so much negative things are happening to Black people that we need to arm ourselves with knowledge and be educated. So thank you very much, Mr. Marshall. Thank you, Marcia, for hosting this important um, forum. And we pray that as we go to the march that we will see great things happening and we'll see change in Barbados. Thank you I very to, much. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say two things. Please uh, give my best wishes to Alex Downs and David Denny on the march. As I said, as a diabetic, I cannot join you. And I want you to pray for me because, as I said, ladies and gentlemen around the world, if anything happens to that statue, the police in Barbados will turn up at my house. That is not something of which I am in doubt because I am mine is a consistent and constant voice and the pen and my writing since uh, since what 1998. So I have no illusion about how what I have said will be received by the majority of Barbadians, black Barbadians. I might be hanged in effigy, but nonetheless. As I said, my father was a soldier who actually served in the Second World War. I was a cadet and trained for war. I fear no man. I do not fear Nelson either. Amen. <laughs> thank you again for coming and being with us. And thank you to those who are on Facebook for staying and watching. And thank you for your questions. And thank you in general for your participation. Have a great day and God bless.